Hello, my name is Chris Evans, and I am from Physical Sciences Incorporated. At PSI, we are developing integrated photonic circuits to improve the bandwidth and range of underwater optical communication links by leveraging special states of light that can carry orbital angular momentum. As I show some of the highlights of this technology, I invite you to think about how this approach might provide a tactical advantage to your mission. PSI is a 48-year-old company that develops advanced technologies and products for the military, aerospace, energy, environmental, and medical markets. PSI is strongly committed to developing products and services based on innovative technologies developed under the SBIR program and has transitioned numerous technologies to support the missions of the Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security, NASA, the EPA, and many commercial partners throughout the entire history of the SBIR program. PSI has multiple examples of technology developed under SBIR funding that have resulted in both commercial success and successful transitions into DOD systems. Under an EPA SBIR program with commercial sponsorship, we developed a handheld LIDAR system, as shown on the right, which enables technicians to survey for leaks within natural gas distribution lines. PSI has developed advanced radiation detection systems for screening at fixed locations, as shown by the gantry based system on the lower left. In addition, on the lower right, PSI has developed a soldier-borne aerial surveillance reconnaissance vehicle, a product we've named Instant Eye. This vehicle has found wide acceptance throughout our military and law enforcement communities for multiple applications. A high bandwidth underwater optical link is a critical need for underwater communications that may have potentially game-changing implications. An ideal underwater communications link should be compact and robust capable of high bandwidths with low error rates and crosstalk to establish secure underwater links over long distances. Immediate applications include long distance remote control of and covert communications between undersea vehicles. Further applications of this technology may even enable swarms of UUVs to communicate with one another to perform a coordinated mission as well as form reconfigurable line of sight underwater optical networks. These are just a few of the potential applications. Now imagine what other applications could leverage this technology to realize a tactical advantage. High bandwidth, long range underwater communication is extremely challenging for several reasons. Commonly used RF signals are high bandwidth, but RF is unable to propagate underwater. Meanwhile, sonar can propagate over long ranges, yet it is inherently low bandwidth. On the other hand, optical communication links are very promising as they can achieve very high bandwidths. However, the range has been limited due to scattering and turbidity within the water. Thus, a key challenge to enabling underwater optical communications is to overcome scattering losses. One promising solution is to use orbital angular momentum states of light, commonly referred to as OAMs. OAMs are special states of light with twisted phase fronts. The number of twists determines the charge state of the OAM. Interestingly, experiments have shown that high charge state OAMs exhibit higher transmission than non-OAM beams under strong scattering conditions. Understanding the nature of this phenomenon is an active research area. In addition, multiple OAMs of different charge state can be combined and separated to create many different data channels to greatly increase the data rate within a given link. To exploit these properties of OEM beams, we require devices that are capable of easily generating and receiving these beams. Our approach leverages a photonic integrated circuit front end to both generate and receive OAM states. You can see one of our on-chip devices on the right, which occupies only three square millimeters of chip area. Light enters into the chips using edge couplers and the OEM states are emitted or received using a vertical grading coupler configuration. These chips are extremely small and highly mass producible using scalable lithographic methods. Our devices are formed using silicon nitride, which allows us to use green light for reduced water absorption. Using a mode sorting approach, these devices are expandable to greater numbers of OEM states, in addition to being compatible with bidirectional operation. To turn one of these chips into a full communication system, we will first package the chips into fiber-coupled transceiver head units that will vertically emit the OEMs. 
From here, these fiber coupled heads can be combined with lasers, modulators, and detectors to form an optical link between pairs of systems. Later stages of this work will include additional provisions for acquisition, pointing, and tracking of the free space OEM beams, as well as a computer interface to handle the data and perform error correction to realize a complete modem. We have successfully completed two rounds of chip design, fabrication, and testing. You can see one of these chips illuminated using a green laser on the bottom of the picture. The green light is guided from the edge of the chip to the device in the middle of the chip, and the OEM state is emitted vertically. To show that we are generating an OEM state, we combine the beam with a reference laser to observe the interference, which produces the characteristic swirl indicative of the OEM charge state. As we progress within this program, we will develop transceiver head units, optimize them to increase their throughput to enable longer distance links, and implement robust coding schemes to reduce and handle errors. Here, we compare the key features of this approach for underwater optical communications. By leveraging OEM beams, our devices will exhibit greater transmission under turbid water conditions that will result in increased communication link distances when compared to non-OEM beams. In addition, as OEMs of different charge state can be readily combined and separated, we can multiplex several OEM states to increase the link's bandwidth. The most common method to combine and separate OEM states utilizes a network of beam splitters with detectors that register a single OEM state. However, as each detector effectively throws away the other OEM states, the losses greatly increase when using large numbers of OEMs. We use a mode sorting approach that does not incur this power penalty to increase the overall power efficiency, resulting in longer distance links and a greater ability to multiplex OEM states. Our approach uses compact photonic chips that are well suited for applications with low size, weight, power, and cost requirements. As these are solid state with no moving parts, they are robust to shock. In addition, these chips can be scalably fabricated using lithographic methods. Our chips also operate using visible wavelengths to minimize water absorption and increase transmission. Lastly, our approach uses line-of-sight transmission that is phase-sensitive making the resulting communication links difficult for eavesdroppers to intercept, resulting in a secure link. There are two key CONOP scenarios. The first scenario focuses on achieving long-range operation, for example, to remotely control a UUV. Here, we use only a few OEM channels with high-power lasers modulated at moderate bandwidths. This approach also uses high-sensitivity detectors and advanced error correction schemes to maximize the data transmission despite high losses and strong scattering conditions. Only a few OEM states are used and their charge states are widely spaced to minimize crosstalk. The second scenario maximizes the bandwidth by exploiting OEM multiplexing at short ranges. Here, many individual low power lasers are modulated at high speed with each laser transmitting data over a single OEM channel. This approach also utilizes more closely spaced OEM charge states. Of these two scenarios, our focus within this program is to maximize the effective range. We plan to use eight OEMs with charge states ranging from minus 16 to plus 16. Each laser will be modulated up to 10 megahertz for aggregate bandwidths of 80 megabits per second, with targeted ranges over 150 meters. Of course, these two CONOP scenarios represent the two extreme usage cases, and these specifications can be balanced depending upon the specific application. Think for a second, what metrics would be game-changing for your application? Our commercialization strategy is focused on two potential products. The first product variation consists of individual OEM transmitter heads for integration into larger systems. Here, the end user would supply the lasers, modulators, and detectors, which allows them maximum flexibility in terms of which CONOP scenario they are targeting. In a second product variation, we can build full underwater communication links whereby the product comes with the lasers, detectors, electronics, as well as pointing and tracking capabilities, resulting in a product that is plug and play. Unlike the first product variation, these products would target a specific CONOP scenario. We have several anticipated end users of this technology, 
including PMS-495, PMS-406, and PMS-408, as well as OPNAV N97 and companies within the oil and gas industry. In summary, we have shown you some of our work developing chip-based transceivers for OEM states of light to enable high bandwidth, long-range underwater optical communication links. As there are many pathways to advance this technology and many potential CONOP scenarios, we invite you to come chat with us and see if OEM technology can provide a tactical advantage to your mission.